Okay, I have uh, previously mentioned how security is like shoveling snow. Um, you've got to do the complete job. Um, this guy has, has done a really good job here. You can see that uh, shoveled right to the edge of the grass. So the uh, when it starts to warm up and, and rain, um, the... Uh, uh, the you know the the drainage is is going to go into the grass rather than over the sidewalk again just in case it decides to to freeze but uh being the only pedestrian in port alberni um <clears throat> you find situations like this where uh once again it's an example of you have to do the whole job because there's absolutely no use to having this beautifully shoveled walk when uh, other people haven't uh done the right thing and, and particularly up there where nobody has uh, shoveled their their walk so um, I am on the roads uh, as is very often the case uh, when when it's snowing um, uh, interesting how few people uh, in Port Alberni uh, shovel their sidewalks um, if it uh, freezes again these people who have left the snow on the sidewalk are going to be sorry uh, you know they're going to have solid ice and then that's really hard to get rid of even if it does warm up and the rain starts again so um, again you know do the complete job now as I say that is that is generally the case with uh, security but we are going into business continuity planning and business continuity planning is a bit of an exception um, I mean, you know, it's it's kind of like Chesterton's maxim that anything worth doing is worth doing badly. Um, uh, you know, hopefully you don't do it completely badly. But um, even if you do it only uh, part way, um, you are still going to have some benefit when you are dealing with business continuity planning. Uh, doing a bit of planning, making a bit of preparation, doing a bit of study um, is going to put you in a better situation than not doing anything at all. So, uh, you know, that's um, one, one difference in uh, the field of business continuity um, in terms of its relation to security. Now, there are many, many more similarities, of course. Um, risk management and everything that goes into risk management um, is uh, something that we can um, uh, use in terms of uh, business impact analysis, which is a, a big part of uh, business continuity planning and, and disaster recovery planning. Um, you know, determining the the impact um, and you know how we can mitigate the impact um, you know that's very very similar to, to risk management so um, there you know there are a whole bunch of uh, overlapping uh, sets of, of skills uh, between uh, business continuity planning and disaster recovery planning and, and uh, security, uh, the larger field of security. So, you know, it's, it's not by any means uh, completely different. And, okay, yeah, nobody's done anything here, so I'm back on the road again. Anyway, um, the, uh, in terms of uh, business, continuity planning. Um, once again, um, in terms of references, uh, uh, there's an awful lot of uh, literature on business continuity planning, on uh, disaster recovery planning. It is um, pretty uniformly bad, or at least not bad, but um, bloated, um, not really focusing on, on the, the primary uh, things that you have to do. Um, so it's, 
you know, it, ton, tons and tons of books out there. Um, as I say, they're not bad. Um, but the, the best of the bunch is um, Disaster Recovery Planning by John Toygo. Now, if you can get the first edition, that is probably better. I mean, you know, generally speaking, literature gets better as, as it goes through multiple editions. Uh, but in th this case, um, it's, uh, it's not. Um, the, uh, uh, his first book was, was smaller. Uh, the second book is much, much larger. Um, and, um, uh, basically it, the first book really covered the essentials that concentrated on the principles and the most important aspects. And it, it was a really good, uh, guide. Um, you know, if you can still get it, uh, that's the one to go for. Um, the second one, as I say, much, much larger, but basically just larded out with a whole bunch of additional, uh, technical aspects of what you might want to do. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you can get the, the first one, good. Now, a manager's guide to contingency planning um, uh, by, uh, oh dear. Uh, anyways, um, I think it's Myers. Um, he's a kind of a contrarian. And as is usually the case, um, that's a good thing. He, he's giving you um, a different take, a different slant on the topic. And, um, you know, having uh, somebody sort of poke and prod at what you're doing is, is a good, good thing. It's, it's uh, you know, you don't have to take his advice as gospel, um, but, you know, definitely consider it. Um, he, uh, for example, he... He says one of the uh, aspects is have a, uh, a a plan for every level of impact. You know, if you have uh, a plan for uh, uh, the loss of the business, uh, the loss of a system, um, you know, most people will tell you have a plan for 50% loss, have a plan for 25% loss, stuff like that. Meyer says don't bother, um, you know, have a plan for 100% loss, anything um, within that plan uh, is, you know, uh, any, any loss less than 100% is going to be handled within the fact that you have a 100% plan. Um, so, you know, that's all the planning you need to. Now, uh, there's, there's definitely... Um, uh, you know, some validity to that, but there is also the uh, cost aspect. And you know, are you preparing for everything? Now, I mean, if you're if you're preparing, planning for, and preparing for all those different aspects, then yeah, that's definitely overkill. But um, there there are times where you think, okay, let's you know, we cannot face a hundred percent loss. Um, Let's just plan for and uh, stock for a 50% loss, and uh, you know we'll we'll rely on that um, because that's what we can afford. So you know that's that's budgeting uh, that you're dealing with there. Um, so um, yeah, and we'll continue on with uh, some of the aspects of business continuity planning. Uh, and, uh, we'll get into that shortly.